Welcome back. Holy Land, the movie, is an independent film that tells the fictional tale of a modern-day mafia, but never once does the film glorify crime to win over its audience. Written and directed by Waterbury native Miles Dubay, this indie film was almost shot entirely in the Brass City and features several of the city's prominent landmarks. Here to talk about the film and show us a clip is Holy Land's writer and director, Miles Dubay. Miles, as I always say, thanks for getting up uh, with us this morning. Let's start from the beginning. When you're thinking of an idea to write and shoot a film, how did this idea come about? Um, I read a lot of like non-fiction crime novels, so uh, you know, I kind of was always interested in the subject and uh, you know, my creativity just kind of ran away with it and ended up making a little script for it. You know? How much research had to go into this? Because I think people sometimes think you just sit down and start writing a movie script, it doesn't work that way. I wouldn't even call it research, I'm just really interested in the subject, right. so you know, doing all the readings that I did, I never considered it research, I was just doing it for my own leisure, you know, reading and just got these ideas on my own and wrote, you know, dropped a little fictional script, you know, to run with. So. As far as the script, what is the basic storyline? What were you looking to tell the audience? Uh, really, it's, it's a story that takes place from 2001 to 2005, and it's really seen through the FBI agent's perspective, you know, for this crew chasing, these FBI agents chasing this organized crime crew, rather than, you know, usually you see stories through the eyes of the, the organized criminals themselves. Right. It's a little reverse, you know, it's just through the eyes of the people that are actually chasing them. So uh, that's kind of the, the perspective I wanted to go with it. Uh, actually, we want to show a clip here and then you can talk about it. Excellent. I've been in the FBI for nearly 15 years. Five of them listening in on the Waterbury, Connecticut, La Cosa Nostra. If I wanted to bring the flag back to Waterbury, I'd have to pay a price. This guy's smart. He's got every neighborhood insulating him, too. So I knew eventually what I'm noticing there, Miles, is um, obviously shots of your, of your hometown. When you're shooting yeah. on location, is that help you because you know exactly the geography and exactly what shots you need? Definitely, definitely. I'm from Waterbury. I lived there my whole life, so you know, knowing what I wanted to do, especially you know, since I wrote the script, I have the visual as far as you know how to make it happen. And like I said, I'm I'm pretty familiar with the area. So, are you turning some heads? I mean, like I'm sure are people seeing a camera. That scene we saw the motorcycles going down the highway. Yeah. There are people kind of doing one of these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? Everyone's kind of rubbernecking just to see you know what's happening. You know what I mean? But uh, everywhere we've kind of asked for permission to film is all always been open arms with us and then you know let us write in so it's it's been an easy process you know what I mean how difficult is that in the sense of going piece by piece because you don't shoot a film in sequential order of how it goes right, right? so right. how do you decide what has to go where mm -hmm. when you're shooting we did we filmed the pretty much the easiest scenes first mm -hmm. and went to you know the more difficult towards the end so kind of got our feet wet with it with you know the, the easier scenes was just dialogue between two people and then you know later on as we progress more in-depth scenes where there's action and gunfire whatever it may be. Did you get a reaction from some Waterbury officials, mayor, police? Like I said everyone's really been you know giving us we had to get permission to film you know in, in some of these locations from right. them so we've no one's given us problems so far. Everyone's pretty been, you know, excited about it. And we've been in the paper a few times, so people are aware. You know what I mean? It's not like they're just coming out of nowhere with it. So they've been pretty receptive. Now, what do you have to do? We were talking about this during the break. You yeah. want to show it where we start and where do we, or how do we see it first, and then what happens after that? It'll be premiered at the Palace Theater in Waterbury, and then from there we're going to go to a few. Um, we're going to show it in theaters throughout Connecticut before we start entering it in film festivals on the East Coast. And uh, as well as New Haven, is it going to be shown here as well? Yes, yep. yep. We're going to show all the major cities in, uh, in Connecticut, Hartford, New Haven, Bridgeport. We'll try to get all the theaters there. And then, like I said, the main thing, too, is just put in these uh, um, film festivals sure. throughout the coast and, you know, see what happens. And then, of course, are we, are we starting the next film as we're, we're distributing this film? Do you have, already have the wheels I, turning? I don't. I need to finish this project before we start, uh, you know, get going with the next sure. one. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Of course, as always, you want more information on this project, the movie project, you can log on to our website at WTNH.com. Let's go over to our own film buff, Erica Green.